Welcome to my new video series called Intriguing Journals by Joseph Applegarth, where we research into sensitive and controversial subjects. The title of today's journal is Babylon's Insidious Agendas. Let us journey back to ancient Babylon, the author of political corruption, thus the death of nations. Thank you for joining me today. In today's intriguing journal, let us examine ancient Babylon, the most formidable, wealthy, satanic province, hence society, that ever existed. Its sin and rebellion against God inevitably caused its repelling, self-destructive demise, thus turning its once unparalleled opulence into a hideous wasteland, hence an apocalyptic extinction. Very few Babylonians narrowly escaped, most of which were the miscreant kingpins, hence the satanic priests of Baal, spelled B-A-A-L, another word for Satan. They brought with them the Antichrist doctrines of its sinister, cryptic religion. These priests, hence minions of Satan, infiltrated neighboring societies. They seduced, hence proselytized, men holding prominent positions in government. In time, with an expanded force of neophytes, they eventually corrupted and usurped these governments from within, like a pervasive and virulent disease, of which ultimately caused the downfall, hence destruction, of those cities and regions as well. As even more wicked priests of Babylon escaped those imploding societies, they in turn infiltrated other nations throughout the world of which eventually created the rise of what is known as a world order and alluded to in modern times as the new world order. This pinnacle of debauchery is what is referred to in the book of Revelation as Mystery Babylon, which means that Babylon, via its Luciferian religion and political dominance, continues to exist. Just like a recalcitrant and fatal virus, it intrudes, invades, and infects its victims like an incurable sexually transmitted disease. It merely relocated and established its pernicious religion, and paradoxically, it now controls the entire world thousands of years afterwards. It was the irredeemable demise of Medo-Persia, Egypt, Greece, and the formidable Roman Empire. In recent history, it became a consortium of Europe, mainly Great Britain, adding both America and Canada to its sinister enclave. Through its unstoppable banking empire and its military might, it pervaded and conquered every nation on planet Earth with few exceptions. Regardless, we cannot fully understand exactly what Babylon is and its modus operandi until we study its very origin. Therefore, let us begin with a succinct 
historical account of infamous Babylon. Babylon was the first colossal city that was constructed in ancient times after the antediluvian era, hence after the Great Flood. Babylon was so imposing that it basically influenced and perhaps controlled the entire known world at that time and certainly sustained its control by its monetary system, hence banking prowess. Although Babylon bears infamy for being patently evil, according to some historians, it had a rather noble beginning, promising liberty and justice for all, as it beckoned immigrants to fortify its imposing and growing might. Does that alluring slogan sound familiar? Babylon speciously claimed to have constitutional protections, representing that of a republic form of government, thus touting civil rights. The same was said about Rome and a host of other dictatorial, hence despotic empires, hiding their enslaving treachery under such an implausible and delusional fraud. Babylon was renowned for its opulence, hence errant wealth. This unusual, lofty lifestyle defined Babylon. Logic suggests that Babylon was originally founded on the merit of integrity, or otherwise it could not have reached the inimitable summit that it did. If Babylon had not fallen, it would still be a well-preserved city with full functionality to this very day, even though it would be thousands of years old. It would be deemed as the greatest wonder of the world and therefore overwhelmed by the tourist industry. The streets were paved with priceless mosaics and the massive walls adorned with heavenly eye-alluring murals. The prodigious city of Babylon had advanced, hence, envious amenities unknown to the outside world. It was the closest man-made structure of which could be compared to heaven on earth in the physical realm. There was no such thing as poverty in Babylon. People would sojourn across the world in an attempt to be a part of its redoubtable esteem, but lacking the knowledge that Babylon was starting to wane. Satan, Akka Baal, has always promised those who follow him wealth and an easy, carefree life, but invariably at the cost of their soul. Babylon eventually devoted itself to Satan and his unprincipled, hence immoral, ways. Babylon created all the Luciferian secret societies, hence mystery schools, and all impious doctrines contrary to the righteousness of God, as exposed in the book of Revelation in the Holy Bible. In Revelation chapter 17, verse 5, it says, And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. As time ticked away, Babylon became indolent, hence lazy, resulting from its errant wealth. Thus, the easy life was taken for granted. Integrity waned away into extinction. Its citizens started to exhibit a salient disregard for principles and values, hence morality. And, because of their flagrant disposition, Babylon became self-destructive in nature, surfeited with all manner of immorality hence abominations, and therefore lost its ability to preserve itself. 
consumed by unmitigated selfishness. It predictably imploded and perished and consequently became a repugnant wasteland. History has proven that the pernicious mindset of Babylon was, and always will be, a lying, cheating, manipulating, loathsome wretch, hence an abhorrent mental disorder. History repeats itself, but mankind, obviously, does not learn from Babylon's repeated historical mistakes and its inexorable destructive patterns. Babylon promises a cake, easy life, but delivers nothing but vice, in a word, addiction, slavery, despair, and an early death. Only the selfish and secluded 1% who control it benefits from its nugatory, hence needless, parasitism. It is a needless and unwanted, exsanguinating vampire. Enslavement is the unconscionable theft of energy. That energy comes from the blood, as the Bible states. Out of your blood, hence energy, your destiny on earth reaches its fruition. If the energy vampires of Babylon bewitch you through deception and manage to steal your energy, hence life force, then you no longer have a destiny and, in its stead, abject enslavement, hence a completely wasted life. The hapless slave's life force is stolen to enrich the worthless, destructive life of a mere parasite of which is alien and unwelcome to this planet. Babylon created all the Luciferian secret societies. Babylon now globally controls religion, banking, the taxing agencies, public, private, and parochial education, the medical establishment, the pharmaceutical industry, psychiatry, militaries, law enforcement, court systems, the entertainment industry, utility companies, insurance conglomerates, natural resources, media, the technology industry, and pretty much everything imaginable. Babylon is the master of mind control techniques. Its number one proclivity is despotism, hence total dogmatic control. The Bible calls it the great whore, the mother of all harlots and false religions. It says that it is repellingly wicked and drunken with the blood of the saints. Yes, its bona fide members actually drink human blood. That is vampirism. Does the word adrenochrome sound familiar? That word is rife on social media platforms these days as the mega wealthy are being exposed for their weird practices as Satan worshippers, which is candy coated as Luciferianism. Jesus referred to this aberrant system as the world, but its implied meaning is the society of Babylon, hence its demented reprobate mindset. Jesus warns us in the book of Revelation to divorce ourselves from her wicked ways as stated in Revelations chapter 18 verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Now that we have uncovered Babylon's nefarious history and usurpation of today's 
conjoined societies, let us examine what Babylon is perpetrating nowadays. Let us briefly expose a mere sample of its deceptive tactics in today's modern world, starting with number one, mind control. Babylon is the inventor, hence master, of mind control. It designed effective ways to hypnotize entire nations, minus the wise men therein, hence the spiritually astute, thus the enlightened, of which are few. Therefore, the vast majority of the masses are bewitched, hence totally controlled by its insidious and multifarious mind control mechanisms. People who are under the witchcraft spell of such paltry hypnotism are commonly referred to as mindless, soulless zombies, thus gullible fools. A circumspect person, hence the prudent man, can plainly see the tawdry bait being proffered as he refrains from drinking the proverbial Kool-Aid, hence the sweet poison or potion of death. Wise men are so few per capita that the kingpins of Babylon deem them to be no threat whatsoever. Wisdom is a choice. Therefore, choose wisdom and depart from the folly of fools, which is the modern-day zombies who just go along to get along and do whatever they are told and unabashedly demonstrate pusillanimous compliance. An intelligent person rises far above the paucity of acumen, hence stupidity. Number two, propaganda. Babylon is the master of propaganda, hence beguiling lies. Most of its puerile mendacities lack any form of plausibility. Regardless, by means of its treacherous and repetitive lies, it destroys public trust, social bonds, the family circles, of which is its first and foremost objective, hence to divide and conquer. It falsely accuses the righteous of turpitude, hence appalling behavior, while the miscreant administrators thereof blatantly abuse people, human traffic them, and commit the worst of abominations while falsely shifting the negative attention onto the righteous. Imagine that. These wretches make sure that no righteous person achieves a prominent position in politics by using propaganda and other diabolical means to sabotage them. Babylon places its minions in leadership positions to form an indomitable gang of which is referred to as the swamp, which means venomous snakes, alligators, and all manner of unconscionable predators, hence parasites. Number three, staged events. Babylon uses staged events to manipulate the masses. If its ignoble objective is to disarm a nation, then wanton murders by means of firearms will be touted daily as a phony excuse to confiscate weaponry. Once this cunning and treasonous manipulation is effectuated, the subsequent unarmed nation invariably falls into enslavement with no hope of escape. The kingpins of Babylon hire professional actors from every country to play the convincing role of wounded victims to deceive the masses. Makeup artists and special effects technicians make it all possible. The scenes aired on television show dead people lying on the streets and wounded people cleaving unto life, some of which have limbs missing, in pain hence experiencing great distress. But it is all fake. 
The masterminds use these forms of manipulation, hence illusions, to stir the emotions of the masses in order to gain their support. They also use movies and music to bolster their agendas in like manner. Number four, narcissism. Narcissism is a psychological disorder defined by unreasonable selfishness, hence greed, comparable to sociopathic and psychopathic forms of insanity. Narcissism is the number one cause of divorce. It is a repugnant mental disorder encouraged by and represented by Babylon. When a nation is infected with such a repulsive mindset, it soon implodes thereafter. Babylon and narcissism are synonymous. This antichrist mental disorder is rife among government and corporate employees these days. Such despicable miscreants are actually protected and promoted by the demonic kingpins of Babylon. Number five, wastefulness. Wastefulness is another intolerable mental disorder. The citizens of Babylon have no qualms whatsoever about wasting anything. Everything is disposable to a Babylonian, including marriages, children, family members, friends, food, and expensive wares and goods, because these wretches lie, cheat, and steal to garner their substance. It was not derived from their sweat equity. They parasite off the backs of the vulnerable working class, hence the modern-day tax slaves. They make sure that the poor receive nothing, and they bury fully functional products and edible food in landfills with contempt to fairness and blatant opposition to compassion. They refuse to recycle viable materials as though to please their defiant god Baal. It makes no sense whatsoever. Number six, despotism. If Babylon is described by anything, it is certainly despotism, which means power-mad control over every aspect of a citizen's life, the promotion of endless wars, the meritless worship of soldiers and colored pieces of cloth called flags of which they pray to and sing inverted hymns to, the arrogance of Babylonian patriotism is where the nation representing Babylon only matters, and the patriots thereof will crush, hence destroy, without compunction. Any person or nation that even questions the cruelty of its Babylonian government. Babylon creates a two-party political system to give citizens an illusionary sense of choice. However, it controls them both equally. Human puppets representing the two opposing sides are selected by the kingpins and not elected by the citizenry. Imagine that. Number seven, the corruption of language. Babylon takes the beneficent words of a language, and dumbs it down. It also will take solid, well-established words and change their meaning into the very opposite. This causes confusion in communication, especially with newer generations whose minds have been tainted by this insidious sabotage. It tries to cause wrong to be right and right to be wrong. The confusion created by this evil sabotage creates the same confusion described in the biblical account of the Tower of Babel. Imagine that. It is who Babylon is and what it does. Number eight, a counterfeit law system. 
Babylon's court system is diametrically opposed to the Mosaic law, hence God's law defined in the Torah, hence Deuteronomy in the Old Testament. There are no moral laws, hence behavioral guides in Babylon but only monetary-based codes, ordinances, policies, and statutes known as the color of law, a legal deception perpetrated by government, which is a felony committed by governments and corporations as defined in Black's Law Dictionary. The kingpins of Babylon make sure that everything imaginable is a contravention of its innumerable fastidious codes where a monetary fine can be imposed upon even the slightest of them as a specious form of an excise tax. This is their spider web of theft through unfair fines and taxation of which benefits the wealth of the one percent, hence the kingpins of Babylon. The same court system is used to separate loved ones, hence families, as they are human trafficked via the CPS, an acronym meaning Child Protection Services, in addition to its incarceration, hence prison system. It is sick and callous beyond compare. It is unjust and sadistically satanic. Number nine, the usurpation of all religions. One of Babylon's main objectives is to subvert and commandeer all religions. It will infiltrate, proliferate, and then discard the religion's former principles and values and convert the religion into a debased and effete social club based on lackluster religious entertainment. Babylon then creates an imposter form of Jesus, of which tolerates wickedness, for example, idols, satanic music, and same-sex marriages, to mention a few, to defile the altar. It then demands strict adherence, hence loyalty, to the Babylonian government, hence statism. Imagine that. Number 10. Defiance to nature. Babylon despises anything natural. For example, naturopathic remedies, especially regarding homeopathic cures for illnesses and diseases, moreover, untainted nutritious food. The medical minions of Babylon speciously claim that nothing can be cured, but rather treated, which means a patient of theirs must be treated for a common curable illness for the rest of their life, namely by ingesting deleterious pharmaceutical pills that have horrible side effects. Anything that is flagrantly against nature, Babylon promotes. Its centers of education debase the human intellect instead of building it, and the list goes on. Babylon turns everything upside down. Number 11. Sexual debauchery. Babylon is the master of sexual debauchery. The minions of Babylon teach young people that it is a virtue to be a homosexual, bisexual, or transgender. It embraces every form of perversion while mocking chastity and the traditional family, hence the monogamous and committed love between a man and a woman. Number 12. Debt Slavery. Babylon makes sure that every citizen is buried in an inescapable debt crisis vexed by high interest rates in 
addition to fees, surcharges, and fines, and the thieving list goes on. If a citizen strangely manages to prosper financially and emancipate theirself from debt, then the corporation, posing as government, will find a way to tax them off their property and seize it via governmental theft, thus rendering the provident, self-motivated, productive citizen into a homeless indigent. Number 13. Pedophilia Babylon bears abhorrent infamy for rampant pedophilia, which is the sexual debauching of children. Babylon forms covert human trafficking rings to buy and sell children as sex slave commodities. Number 14. Human Sacrifice One of the most horrific crimes committed by Satanists is human sacrifice. This is, ultimately, how they conjure demonic entities of which endow them with dark powers. Number 15. Consumption of Human Blood An unnerving practice regarding the kingpins of Babylon is their invariable pattern of consuming human blood mostly derived from terrified children via child sacrifices. This is the true meaning of vampirism. It is sick beyond belief. Number 16. Self-Destruction The reprobate priests of Babylon are incapable of considering consequences for their egregious crimes against humanity and their obdurate rebellion against God, which ultimately leads them to their irretrievable destruction, hence death. Their toxic religion of Baal is the road to perdition, hence the highway to hell, of which the Bible warns against. This is but a few of Babylon's invariable patterns. Its abhorrent reign of terror upon humanity has, again, come to its end as the Bible lucidly forecasted through prophecy. Modern Babylon is in the state of implosion as we speak. God is going to cause a cataclysmic event to destroy Babylon permanently. Let us review what the book of Revelation says about its final despotic reign and its imminent extinction starting in Revelation chapter 17 verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Note, this denotes Babylon's global dominance. Verse 2, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Note, this denotes that Babylon is the author of prostitution, pornography, and substance abuse, hence all carnal addictions. Verse 3, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Verse number four. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Verse 5, And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Verse 6, And I saw the woman, drunken 
with the blood of the saints and with the blood of martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Verse 7. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath seven heads and ten horns. Note, this denotes that Babylon waxed rich with inordinate wealth by means of prostitution, human trafficking, drugs, theft, and murder. Verse 8, The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wander, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. Note, this denotes the mystery of Babylon. It self-destructed because of its rebellion against God. It infiltrated and usurped other countries and destroyed them, and then makes the ultimate comeback, dominating the entire world, of which inexorably ensures its final destruction, hence extinction, on planet Earth. Verse 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. Verse 13. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Note, the kingpins of Babylon determine who becomes kings and rulers over other nations so that it has ultimate control over the world. Verse 14, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Note, it is clear to see that these minions of Babylon are repellingly satanic as a consortium and have the audacity to attempt to make war with the Almighty. That is inexplicable patent insanity. Many eminent theologians concur that America is the only nation that perfectly fits the description of modern-day Babylon, which means that America will be the nation that gets annihilated and turned into a wasteland, thus no different than the original Babylonian location in Iraq. The 18th chapter of Revelation goes into detail describing the very nation of modern-day Babylon and describes the segue into its complete annihilation. The process of implosion has already begun in the year 2022. It would behoove you to thoroughly read the chapter. In conclusion, our duty as Christians, let alone as human beings, is to make this world a better place, despite the evil workings of Babylon. We can achieve this noble ideal by divorcing ourselves from its corrupt, encompassing system and by emancipating ourselves from its parasitic, enslaving clutches by rebuking the evil wretches who represent it and holding them to accountability. There are even legal forms that can be submitted that dissolve 
the commercial birth certificate and social security number, etc. But most importantly, praying against Babylon's intolerable tyranny is essential. A most effective way to separate from Babylon is to live a waste-free, self-sustaining lifestyle that resonates with nature. Some call this lifestyle homesteading. Living such a wholesome lifestyle creates an abundance. Therefore, we should share our surplus with those less fortunate. But most importantly, we need to share the love of God with those who appreciate its divine healing power. We can have heaven on earth by doing these simple things. In closing, pray for the divine protection of holy angels and deliverance from the cruel minions of Babylon who victimize the innocent. We now know who the real enemy is and what to do to protect ourselves from this unconscionable monster that the Bible calls the beast. Therefore, let us trudge forward, prosper, and fulfill our noble destiny.